Hi. Welcome, everybody, who have joined us today for our um, next learning lunch presented um, by the Tomahawk team here um, offering uh, Availabilities Resbook. And thank you guys so much for joining us. I know you had really short notice on this. Um, uh, so we've got a lot of people who have emailed and called and said they can be with us today, and they'll be watching the recorded version. Um, so thanks, everybody, for being here today. So without further ado, I would like to introduce um, Brian. Brian Paella is from Trip Advisor. And he's the Trade Relations Manager, and he's speaking us today from, is it Chicago, Brian? No, we're in Boston. Boston, thank you very much. Boston. Lovely. With uh, I'm not going to take up any of the time today. I'm going to let Brian um, start educating us on um, how important TripAdvisor is to all of us. So thank you, Brian, again, for being with us today. Thank you, Gina, and thanks to everyone for logging on today. I'm really excited about this. Um, love the opportunity to share this kind of information with the uh, the people in the hotel industry, and as uh, as just as important, we look to get feedback on the resources that we've built for you to use. So please uh, consider this a dialogue and share your feedback with us. I also want to point out that on your screen you should have a dashboard which has uh, is one of the lines the word questions with a little plus sign next to it. If you expand that you should be able to ask a question there and uh, my colleagues here will monitor those questions <laughs> and if, uh, if anybody needs to break in um, maybe we'll have a, uh, a little um, discussion going on but I just want to commit that uh, we will be getting to all the questions at the end. So ask anything that, uh, that occurs to you. Really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. So as we said, let's get going. So our, our um, intro slide here talks about this is really an opportunity to join a conversation with 42 million travelers. We have 42 million people coming to TripAdvisor every month. It's the world's largest travel website. It's the world's largest travel community and you have the opportunity to join in that conversation. You hear a lot of people talking today about social media. This is social media that started 10 years ago and it's really uh, what tra travelers have decided they want to prioritize. Um, you, know, you talk about a conversation, you talk about social, we're really talking about people sharing information Muted. like they share it with their friends. Uh, and TripAdvisor is the biggest group of friends out there. As I said, 42 million uh, monthly uniques very importantly, I think, is the way that the percentage of those people who have joined the community, who have registered as members of TripAdvisor so that they can contribute information, has grown steadily as a percentage to the point now where we have more than 20 million registered members. We have 35 million reviews and opinions, and every minute of every day there are 21 new reviews and opinions so that we have the freshest information about every hotel, attraction, and restaurant in every city around the world. Um, we now have operations in 24 different countries, uh, in 17 different languages. We want to have information uh, about whatever somebody's looking for, no matter where they're coming from. We've, we're expanding uh, regularly around the globe, and, uh, and we just want to be the most important uh, pervasive source of information uh, for travelers anywhere. And when you look at how we compare to other media companies and other sources of travel information, you see that we recently overtook our friends at Expedia to become the world's most visited travel website. And the reason I bring that up is really that it speaks to how important this information is to travelers. People are looking for information that is filtered by people like themselves. It's fun to read a travel guidebook written by the rich and famous, but when you're coming down to making your own personal decisions, the people whose experiences most closely match yours are the ones that are most valuable, and research tells us over and over that's what people trust. That's what they trust most. It comes as a big surprise to most people in the travel business when they first see a graph like the one that you're looking at right now. 
there's an assumption in customer service in all areas of consumer behavior that feedback is generally going to be negative. The only time people bother to submit a review is when they have something nasty to say. And I'm, I'm glad to say that that's absolutely not the case. You know, I talked about how this is a community. This is people sharing information. When people come back from a great trip, they want to help the property that gave them the great experience, and they want to help the community that helped them find that property and to give back. We hear from travelers all the time that the reason they submit reviews is because they want to give back to the community. And that's the reason that you see that that five-star review, the most glowing review that you can give, accounts for 44% of the total reviews on TripAdvisor, and only 10% on the other side of the um, spectrum are that uh, one-star rant. So it really is about people uh, giving back to the community and enjoying the experience and then giving back to the hotels themselves. And because the information is so valuable to travelers and um, provides so much uh, value to the hotel industry as well, unfortunately, as we all know, there are people who are going to use it for the wrong purposes, people who violate the terms of service that they agree to when they submit reviews. And because of that, we have a very aggressive fraud detection and enforcement procedure and policies in place. This has been in place right from the start of the company. It is made up of several different components, including a team of folks who track down all the leads and remove any fraudulent materials that they get. We hear from people all over the place, um, and we track down all that information. In addition to the team of folks that do that manually, there are a lot of automated tools in place as well. We have a big engineering team that's always adding new tools and refining the ones we have so that we can systematically look through all that content. You think about how much new information is every day. We have to go at that with some very sophisticated tools, and we're constantly refining those. And very importantly, maybe the most important thing, is that the community itself, by nature, is self-policing. Uh, I just heard uh, very recently about a hotel thinking that one of their competitors had been submitting fraudulent reviews against them to bring their rating down. We get notifications like that all the time. We want to hear that. We take it very seriously. The people who perpetrate that kind of fraud are penalized. There are very uh, strong penalties. I'll show you in a few minutes. But it's all about the community supporting it. Unmuted. The community values and relies on the integrity of that information. We do, the trade does, the travelers do, so we all work together to keep that information as high quality as possible. Um, I just want to point out that there are several different things that can fall under the fraud umbrella. It's great to review these with people on your staff so that everybody knows and that nobody even inadvertently thinking they're doing something very positive could bring the property down in a rating. So things like um, asking friends or relatives, putting a computer in the lobby to help guests write reviews. If we see that, that is a violation. And unfortunately, even that can have penalties associated with it. So it's great to review this list with your teams so that everybody um, knows what not to do so that everybody can um, stay in, in good stead. Unfortunately, in the absolute Muted. first cases, uh, we do have to assign penalties. And what you're looking at right now on your screen, the red badge, is actually part of the most severe penalties that we impose. We would remove any reviews that we believe are fraudulent and then assign this, among other penalties, uh, by putting this on the listing so that any traveler who sees this knows that um, we have found this information. There's uh, a contingent that would say, well, why don't you just take down the whole listing? When people rely on TripAdvisor for their travel advice, we feel we have an obligation to share with them what we know. And if, uh, if they were to come to TripAdvisor and not find any information and make a decision um, without the full information, 
lunch and have a bad trip, then we would we would think we did not serve them well. So we do leave everyone listed, and we do provide as much information as we can. So moving on to a much, uh, a much more productive topic is now that we know that travelers really value this information, that they want it, that they're seeking it out, there's more and more of them looking for it, what can you do about it? They're talking about your property, so let's talk about how you can turn that into a marketing opportunity, and that's basically by joining in this conversation that we've been describing that all these people are having. The first thing you have to do is you can't do anything about the conversation if you don't know what's being said. So the easiest thing to do is to sign up for our email notification. I'll show you in a few minutes how you do that, but you're able to sign up for an email that every morning you will get the latest reviews from your that were uh, put on your property's listing. So therefore, you're right on top of it. If there's a new review on there, you know about it and you can uh, take the appropriate action. Here I have an example of one of those emails and I'm looking at um, a review from a Hawaiian hotel and I see it's not a great review. So as an owner or manager, if I see that, I'm probably going to want to go to the bottom of that listing. You see I've actually got a link there that says write a management response to any review. So I can start that process right here. That's one of the ways that we really encourage you to stay involved in the conversation. Here's a quote from a guy I think uh, does a lot of really good writing about hotel management and marketing, uh, Neil Salerno, who said, a well-written response is your strongest sales tool. He did a whole series on this. And I really agree with him where he said the way you write the management response, now just to be clear if anybody hasn't seen this, TripAdvisor gives you the opportunity to respond to any review, positive or negative, and your response can be published right alongside that review. So if there's something you take uh, exception to, if there's something you disagree with, or if you just want to thank somebody, you can write your own management response and speak to the audience that's going to be reading that review. I've talked to hotels who uh, embrace this technology and embrace this opportunity, and they have told me that they get more referrals from well-written management responses than they even get from the positive reviews that sit alongside them. So it really is a great opportunity. Here's an example of a management response uh, from down in your neighborhood where you, the writer has taken the opportunity to turn a negative into a positive. If somebody's talking about a piece of equipment like a television or the carpeting or something like that, you have the opportunity to describe how you've changed that. Number one, thank them for their comments and then describe how you've changed it and tell um, the future readers of this what they need to know to have the confidence that this um, experience the previous guest had is not going to be repeated and then you can go on and describe things that maybe weren't addressed in the review and turn it into a little bit of a sales message so um, you don't want to sound um, ingenuous or disingenuous and too um, salesy but it's an opportunity to say and we've also renovated this and this and we have a new policy that's this so it doesn't have to be um, a short no, 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 that didn't happen sort of a response. You have the opportunity to um, talk to all the people who are going to be reading this going forward. Remember the millions of people who are on TripAdvisor. You don't want to focus just on the person who, um, who wrote it. You want to focus on the needs of the people who are coming behind them and reading the review going forward. Another good writer last year I thought did a, a great job on the topic of negative comments, not specifically to travel, but to any place where reviews are being offered. And they summed it up in four points. And the first one, reply quickly, I really agree with because, as I said, this is a huge audience. And you have the potential to have hundreds or thousands of people reading that review. And if they don't see the review or don't see your response, then they draw a conclusion that possibly what was written is 
accurate and that um, it doesn't matter to the management of the property. And you, you want to set all that straight. This writer's second uh, suggestion was to be respectful. And that really, I think, applies to talking to the people who are coming along and reading this review, um, not talk, talking directly to the, um, to the guests. Certainly, you have to address that guest but you don't want to sink to their level if they were an irate, um, abusive person. You certainly don't want to be the same just because you want to um, talk to the next people. And don't miss the opportunity to be thankful. Again, you are showcasing your customer service in these management responses. So it's an opportunity Unmuted. to be thankful the same way you would in your um, own hotel lobby. It's also an opportunity to invite further feedback so that um, you know, we all improve based on feedback. I also want to point out that since we're stressing that you really want to act quickly and get management responses out quickly, that you want to um, just be a, uh, up to date on all of the different things that could slow down that process. So certainly any profanity or insults, but even things as simple as putting an email address or phone numbers or any HTML content in there will slow down the process, they'll get it rejected, and you'll have to resubmit it. And all that time you're going through that back and forth is time when people may be seeing this negative review and drawing a conclusion. So you really do want to address those. Um, those. And I did notice in doing um, research for this that there does seem to be a lower number of management responses against negative review um, in uh, on your properties, and I really encourage you to um, start thinking about and getting involved in that conversation. Hey, so, Brian, I'm going to uh, interrupt you real quickly. Sure. Yeah. Because we've had a couple questions that are quite appropriate to what you're talking about right now. Um, we've had a couple Great. people um, um, who are obviously understanding the power of responding to comments. Um, what um, One person has specifically said, "What do I? can I respond to something that's old, that's over a year ago, or is that just inappropriate now? I think it, I think it's absolutely appropriate. I think I encourage people to do that, especially when there's any sort of a reno, renovation involved. If you have a review from two years ago that talks about, you know, a problem with the facility that has been corrected, I strongly encourage you to go back to that old review, submit a management response, and upload photos of the new renovation, because all of that will be linked, and you will be able, you know, anybody seeing it number one is going to be reassured that what was described in that earlier review is no longer the case and they don't have to worry about it. So oh. I absolutely uh, encourage people to go back to old reviews and do that. Awesome. And uh, I'm going to talk about photos in a minute. You can upload an unlimited number of photos. So if you've had any renovation, just you know, go crazy and upload as many. Ah, oh, super. Thanks for that. All right. So all the tools that allow you to do Muted. what we're describing, submitting management responses, uploading photos, um, doing all things like that, are located in your own owner's page. And every hotel, every B&B, &B, every restaurant has its own owner's page on TripAdvisor with, with content that is uh, customized specifically for your property. So you go to your owner's page by going to your listing, like the fictional one that we're looking at right here, and I go to the bottom of the page, and I see a green box that says, do you own this property? And where my arrow is pointing, I say, start here and visit my owner's page. I click on that, and I end up at a page with a heading that looks like this, where I've got the name of the property and then a series of tabs. See, it says get started, promote your business, track performance, get more reviews, and manage your listing. I'll talk about all those in some detail, but over on the right, manage your listing is the one that um, you first want to visit and make sure you're as optimized as you can be. Once you click on that, you go to a page that looks like this. Um, it might not be as, as pressing a question uh, with our time difference. Uh, as it is for some of the properties right around here, but I, I'm frequently asked, well, why can't we just correspond by email or phone? 
this ends up being a much more efficient way to um, communicate these kinds of responses because we have a record of them, we can track them, we can see how well we're doing responding to them and see if there's anything that's still sitting out there. We did a lot of analysis and realized that we were losing so many cycles going back and forth with email trying to get all the information we need. So we put this link system in place and I'll show you how it works. But on the, um, the main section there that says update your listing has all the tools to make sure that the information in your listing is accurate, is up to date, and as, as good as it can be. This is where you can update your details, add photos, post a video, link us to an article in travel journals, anything that will um, let us know what's going on at your property. The second section down there called Manage Reviews is where you correspond with TripAdvisor. That first, um, that correspond with this is specifically regarding your reviews. Um, so the first link is Get Notified of Guest Reviews. That's where you sign up for that email I showed you a sample of a few minutes ago so that every day you get an email if you've got any new reviews so you can um, respond. Right below it is the link to respond to a review. As I said, you can also do that from inside the email, and you can do it from a few other places I'll show you. Uh, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to find that. Uh, and then ask a guest to write a review. And then on the right, uh, you see there's a link that says report a problem with a review. This is where you let us know when you think a review is a violation of our terms of service. Now, if you respond to a review, from the link on the left. That's a public conversation that you're going to have where you post a public response that's attached directly to the review for everyone to read. On the right, reporting a problem with a review is a private conversation that you have with us where you tell us that you think a review should be removed and why. And I um, have to say uh, you really want to give us as much information as possible in that. So uh, depending on uh, what you think is the violation, if a competitor has determined to run you down and has submitted uh, fraudulent reviews, then you can uh, let us know that, give us as much information as possible. And if we can prove that, we will certainly take down the reviews. We do that all the time. Likewise, if there's a disgruntled former employee or if you think um, something rises to the level of, um, of being profane, anything like that, that's where you let us know, and that's the private conversation. I will say, though, that if we're going to investigate fraud, it can take some time. It could take uh, a week or two. And so I encourage everyone that while we are investigating that, you uh, also submit a management response publicly, and you can just let the guests know we take exception to this, we don't think it's false, and we have um, submitted a, a request to have it removed. And here's our um, here's our rebuttal. Um, you know, keep it short and sweet. But that's um, that's what I recommend. So if you were to click on one of those links, you would be taken to a page that looks like this, and you see that the boxes are already uh, pre-filled because I've registered as the owner of this property. And it says, please tell us what the re the issue is. And I've selected from the drop-down box that this is a review dispute. So I'm going to ask TripAdvisor to remove a review. And then it says, what's the reason for the dispute? Uh, and, and then I clicked from the next drop-down box that this review contains a personal insult. And then it asked me to select the review. You'd be surprised how many of the email exchanges we had where people would say, remove a, remu a review immediately and then wouldn't even tell us which review they were talking about. So it ended up slowing it down, and we weren't able to do as good a job as we would have liked. So this system actually gives us as much information as we need to make those um, decisions quickly. On this next example, you see at the bottom there is a comment box. You'll see that comment box on any one of these uh, forms, and that's where I suggest that you give us absolutely as much information as possible. If you think a former employee is slamming you, then please provide their name, their um, personal email address if you have it, anything like that that can help us put the pieces together and make the connections 
uh, behind the scenes to determine um, you know, in your favor. The example that we're looking at right here is interesting because it is a report of an ownership change. Most people don't realize that if a property changes ownership, or even if it changes brand, if it changes its brand flag, goes from one brand to another, if you report that and provide the documentation, we will remove reviews from before the change. So if a property was not well run by the previous owners and you have purchased it, if you let us know, submit this form, we will do the investigation, and once we uh, have documented that, we can remove the old reviews and you start fresh and can start higher up on the popularity algorithm. So when I talked about updating your property details, let me give you an example of, um, of some things you can do. Here's a, a property listing uh, from, from your market. And um, you see that I have put a brown box around this section on the right. And I've clicked on the tab that says Details. Now this property it tells us how many rooms it has. It has a fitness center and free parking. Those amenities are yours to add to or take away from on your owner's page. So you make sure that that's absolutely as rich as can be. You also see that this property only has one photo. As I said, you now can upload as many photos as you want, and you can choose your, um, your thumbnail over on the left. Here we have a nice shot of the front of this property. But you can change that uh, as many times as you want. If you're in a seasonal location, certainly you want the thumbnail to appeal to people for what they're searching on right now. We're getting into ski season up here not too long. So if people are planning holiday trips, we want to have the right kind of photos for, you know, in a summer location, you certainly want to have the beach photos out, not the snow photos at the uh, appropriate time. So you have the opportunity to update the information on your listing. Here's an example of another uh, property in the market where they've actually gone through, you see this has a much different look where they've added all sorts of language uh, to describe the property. I like to think of this as the same sort of, a, of an effort you would go through for search engine optimization of information. You want to focus on what people are looking for when they find your property. So if you're near uh, a destination, if you're near uh, an attraction, certainly keep those words at top of mind when you craft this. because. Um, when people are comparing the reviews, and if you've got um, a good standing with the reviews, just like a competitor, then what is there to compare? You want to make sure that you have as much information here as possible. We give you the opportunity to, um, to sort of see all your reviews digitally with the Track Performance tab that's on your owner's page. Um, there's a lot of questions about how TripAdvisor determines the popularity ranking in a given city. And we don't disclose all of the details of that the same way Google does not disclose the details of their popularity algorithm. But we do disclose that, of course, since we're TripAdvisor, reviews figure very heavily into that. And so what we did was um, say that it's difficult to look at all of those paragraphs in a review and, uh, and get much more than the rating for uh, determining how you're doing against your competitors. So we came up with something called the CSI, or Customer Satisfaction Index Score, based on 1 to 100, that's uh, built on seven key criteria of guest satisfaction. And if you look here, uh, if I was the manager of the Bellagio in Las Vegas, and I wanted to see how I was doing against the MGM Grand, I can look at this graph and see that for the month of July 2010, I got 85 reviews, and the MGM Grand got 69. Uh, I had a customer satisfaction index score of 92.4, and the MGM Grand had one of 81.3. When you've got more good reviews in the recent months, it counts heavier against your algorithm, your popularity index algorithm. And that's one reason um, I get questions from people saying, you know, I have more reviews, and I'm a 
five, and they have fewer reviews. They're a five, but I have more reviews. Why am I not higher than them? And I always bring them back to this graph, this display, because it's the most recent months that count the most. I can't tell you which or how far back you should you should look, but um, you know here we have consistently higher numbers in the recent months. So even if there were more reviews at the MGM Grand overall going back to 2000, the Bellagio is um, higher up because they have more good reviews in recent months. So this is a great way to see how you're trending, how you're doing in your reviews compared to your competitor. You can change this competitor as frequently as you would like, and then you look at the market as a whole to see if there are any seasonality effects that are uh, affecting the, uh, the results. We also give you another graph that I think is really valuable in team meetings and, and uh, just quick checks to make sure everything's on track. And what we're looking at here are the eight most recent reviews for an unfortunate hotel. Uh, I could click on any one of these with my mouse and open it up and read it in full. And what it gives me is those seven key criteria. And for instance, cleanliness, of course, ranks very high in customer satisfaction. I can look vertically at the eight most recent reviews and see how much green versus white I have in that category. And if I'm trending in the right direction or the wrong direction, have a conversation with my staff if we need to, and, uh, and make sure everything's on track. It's, I've seen people print these out and hang them in the um, service um, areas in the lunchroom just so everybody's on top of what the most recent reviews say. And you notice that we do have a color coding where if there's a red pill over there on the right, that means a guest said they would not recommend the property. So very important criteria. So what it's doing is helping you distill the essence of all of those reviews since um, it sometimes can be overwhelming to read all those reviews and get a, a quick read on how you're doing. And then for the statisticians in the back office, we even give you a statistical graph. All of these graphs that I've been showing are available in either day, week, month, quarter, or yearly um, distribution. So you have the choice of looking at it however you want to manage your reviews. So we've talked about how important reviews are and how the most recent reviews count the most. Then the, the follow-on question is usually, well, how do I get more reviews? If the most recent reviews count the most, how do I get more? And you know, it, it all comes down to um, you know making your guests just absolutely delighted with your your property, of course. And then certainly it's okay to ask them to write reviews. The easiest way to do that is to send them emails with links, because when they read an email, they're at a computer where they could submit a review. And of course, you can also respond to their comments online. There are some unmuted in review solicitation that would uh, would get you in trouble. We have rules about some of these things. You can't offer incentives. You can't, um, you can't do things like that. But it's certainly okay to just ask a guest to write a review. What we're looking at here is an email that one of my colleagues got after going to a hotel in New York, and I added the red for emphasis. But they basically asked him to submit a review uh, to TripAdvisor.com. If I were to click on that link that says TripAdvisor.com, it wouldn't take me to the TripAdvisor.com homepage. It actually is a deep link right to the submit a review page for this property. We've got that um, HTML available for you on your owner's page that you can just copy and paste to get people right to that so that they can submit the review. We also have recently added the ability to order business cards and to actually download and print out your own reminders if you'd like to hand them out when guests leave. So these are actually customized for your property. We have these um, distributed worldwide and a, custom, a company called Vistaprint that is global, I understand. And all they do is uh, charge for shipping. So hopefully they have a, a local printer down there and the shipping wouldn't be too bad. Um, one thing I think is a really overlooked opportunity for hotels are the forums on TripAdvisor. And the forums are a very unique part of the site. 
you know, everybody thinks of TripAdvisor and they think of reviews. There really are a big group of people. They're not a majority, um, but they're pretty vocal and pretty active travelers who don't really prioritize reviews, and I know a few who actually don't ever read them. What they think of TripAdvisor is a place to go and ask um, for travel advice in a conversational setting. They literally post a question and then people jump on and answer it and give suggestions. From a hotel standpoint, it's a great opportunity to see what people are looking for. If you're trying to figure out if it's time to advertise a, a seasonal change or, or you know, some other aspect, tr check out the forums and see what people are looking for, what's important to them right now while they're tra travel planning. It also um, tells you how far in advance they're travel planning by the questions that they're asking. And then some hotels, like the one who provided the quote in the slide, actually then get involved and contribute to the forum. They answer the questions. Certainly you don't want to um, try and sell in that kind of a situation. You'd end up with uh, the community itself jumping on you pretty, um, pretty muted. But you have the opportunity to offer advice as an expert on the local, um, the local area, the same way your concierge does. Um, in fact, that's a great person to, to get involved. Here's some examples of um, some of the New Zealand forums that I was looking at earlier today, the kind of questions, questions about the museum, um, Spanish-speaking doctors. I mean, here are questions that, that you would get in the hotel business all the time, and by answering them or, um, or just getting involved, you end up raising the brand and people start to recognize you, and you certainly end up with um, some halo effect and, and positive reinforcement on it from that. One other thing you can do, we have so many people who value this information. You know that if they read um, about your hotel somewhere, they're going to end up probably on a review site, most likely TripAdvisor, looking at your reviews. You have the option to bring that content right onto your own site if you want to um, so that they don't have to open another window and you would have a greater chance of, of losing them to some other distraction or somebody trying to poach them. So we make it uh, easy to bring the content on either in the form of a badge, as you see on the left, or a widget, as you see on the right, when you actually bring the headlines of your most recent reviews in there. The cool thing about these we've heard from people who've adopted them is that they have a big impact on conversion because you're taking away that unknown factor. Um, people see comments from people like themselves, they identify with them, they're relevant to their own experience, and they feel better about making the decision. One tour operator added these and doubled conversion on the pages that actually had the, uh, the reviews. So that's something to consider. As I mentioned before, photos and, uh, and videos are huge, and we see more and more people consuming more and more of them. Um, the number of pages of photos a typical user will look at keep going up, and we've looked statistically at properties that have 20 or more photos on their listing will get at least 150% more traffic to their listing. People want to see that information. That's the kind of thing that they are um, consuming at a greater and greater rate. And likewise, there's an expectation that there is a video from a lot of consumers these days, especially with the preponderance of YouTube and other venues. They expect to see video content. You can upload as many photos and as many photos, videos as you would like. Videos have the added benefit of allowing you to tag them with up to six tags. So if you are close to a stadium or to a museum or a beach or whatever your location is known for, make sure that you've got a video on there that is relevant to that, that topic and is tagged with that so that if somebody's doing a search in the search box at the top of the site, maybe hasn't even found your location yet, your video will be one of the first things that they see, and uh, it's just a great way to convey um, all sorts of unique aspects of your property. And here's just an example of some of the videos that are on there. They get thousands and thousands of, of, um, of views. 
I want to tell you about some of the other interesting things that we've been working on that are probably um, going to be new to you. Number one is travelers definitely are some of the most passionate users of smartphones. We were kind of slow to get on the smartphone bandwagon. We thought, well, it'd be good for restaurants, but who's really going to plan travel on their smartphone? Finally, we took the leap and launched a mobile site this year. We now have the most popular mobile site uh, on the web uh, for tra in the travel space with, I think, more than 3 million people using it. And we've got all the content on there. So you can read reviews on hotels, restaurants, things to do. All the information specially delivered in that mobile um, website. And now we've got all these photos on there. People are just using this stuff, gobbling it up. This is what they're looking for uh, in a surprising rate. We were very surprised that it's not just for last minute activities. We see people using these uh, for trip planning, reading reviews, doing basically all the things they do on a desktop or laptop computer on these smartphones. So it really is something that everybody ought to be thinking about and playing with and figuring out what to do next with. And so TripAdvisor's got all our content on there, and it's just growing and growing. An interesting phenomenon that we observe here is that uh, while we traditionally see a little bit of a dip in traffic on the weekends on the dot-com site, on the mobile site, you actually see a pretty nice rise in, in traffic. So it fills up. So everyone's going to want to um, examine what their own mobile strategy is and how they get involved in it, and certainly um, look at how your property is portrayed on TripAdvisor in that mobile way. Um, one thing that's important from a mobile standpoint is that our new business listing, which I saw somebody had put a question up about the business listing. Here's an example of a business listing where this property has added its phone number, its website, and its email right to the top of its listing. If you're in a mobile phone, um, you know the click to dial is very important, and the business listing is really the only way that you're going to have that. That's um, sold on a an annual subscription basis. And um, you can find out about that on the website or, uh, or call one of the toll-free numbers that are on the website. Um, and it also gives you the opportunity to promote special deals. And the interesting thing about special offers is that they are promoted on the top of the destination page. So if you have a property that's a few pages down in the results and you have a special offer, it will actually be promoted right up there near the number one hotel in the geography. Very interesting. Um, thing to do. Here's an example of a hotel that's number 253 in New York, and we just saw that it was promoted on the first page of the New York results. So um, pretty interesting. Um, one other thing that's really starting to break off, TripAdvisor was you know, one of the early social media companies in the travel space. We've been uh, out here for 10 years now. And we all know travelers want to hear from other travelers and, uh, and their friends specifically, and you look at sites like Twitter and Facebook, people are basically submitting travel reviews in their wall posts. You see these little snippets out there. People are going to share information in the place that they like the most, the place where they feel more, most comfortable. So we've been cognizant of that. We want to stay involved in wherever people are sharing travel information. So the first thing we did was put the like button on our pages. We were one of the first travel companies to have the like button when it was tested earlier. And we also have this thing called Cities I Visited that's been out there for three years on Facebook. Um, we didn't really know where this was going to go when we started with it, but we said we want to have a presence on Facebook, and we're known for travel. And what's fun about travel? And it's sharing information with your friends. And Facebook's all about quick little bits of information. So we built this map where people can pin where they've been. And you see um, all these different pins in all these different cities. And people designate whether they've been in there, whether they can advise people, what's their favorite, and maybe where they're going, where they want to go. Right now we have 5 million people using this. We have a billion pins. And every day we get 5 million more pins. 
So what it all boils down to is we now have this marriage of TripAdvisor and Facebook experiences together so that if you see on this page, you know, I'm looking at hotels in Auckland, at the top of the page it says your friends have been to Auckland Central and over on the right it says get advice from your friends. I can actually ask my friends, um, my friend Karen here is actually an Aussie married to a Kiwi, she's an uh, expert in this area, and I could ask her really quickly on Facebook what I should be doing when I when I go to any one of these cities. Um, it's a way to expand the universe and contract it at the same time and stay relevant to, to people on all the different sites. So um, I bring it up not because there's something you can um, quickly do with it immediately, but it's definitely something uh, I think that we're all very excited about and are going to be watching and that will be very exciting to see where it goes from here. So that wraps up the presentation. Gina, you want to help me with the, the questions here? It looks like we got a bunch while, while I was talking away. I'm muted. Yeah. Brian, thank you so much. You know, it's really amazing. The last couple webinars we've done, there were heaps and heaps of questions. But I think you were so comprehensive that we, we don't have as many as I would think. Otherwise, it was because um, we usually also start off our, our webinars asking everybody to type in what they had for lunch or what they're having for lunch as they listen. Um, but I purposely didn't do that at the beginning because I knew you were going to um, give us so much information. So I don't know if it was because we didn't ask them or because you were so good. Now look, at, there's a couple that we are going to want to address. Um, now Fred has um, asked us. Sure. Um, he's number one on the CSI chart, but not on TripAdvisor. So how can we explain that for him? Yeah, the CSI is the calculation of those seven key criteria. The popularity index is a different algorithm that uses some of that same information, but it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence. The popularity algorithm takes into account many more factors than that, um, but it it should be um, it should be pretty pretty close. I would hope he's not too far off. I'll take a look at it after the um, after the um, after the call and just see if if there's a quick explanation, but. Um, Thank you. I mean, if, if you're number one in CSI, then you, you're probably not going to be too far down the list, but there could be some other things. And the um, CSI is not um, as driven by uh, recency as, as the popularity algorithm is. So that's basically one thing. I always recommend going back to the graph that had the month by month uh, comparison and look at the last few months. If in the last few months you don't have, um, or the the person who's above you doesn't have more good reviews than you do, then that would be um, a cause for a question. I'd be interested in looking at that myself. But that would be my guess is that um, in the last few months, it's the sheer number and and quality of the reviews from the other property is probably just higher. Cool, cool. We'll ask Fred to review that, and you said that you were going to review, so that's fantastic. Yep. Now, in New Zealand, um, we are a smaller country than the United States. Not sure if you're aware of that. Um, so we do tend to have smaller properties here. Um, so if somebody is a small property, um, like they're a B and B, which are really popular in New Zealand, but near them is a large hotel. How does somebody with a smaller property compete with a large one to 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 show that that, that they're wonderful? Um, so that's a great question, and I'm going to um, let's see if I can open up a browser. You're all going to see my scary computer desktop here. Oh, <laughs> I had I had one open, and I somehow lost it. Um, but there are um, a few different things at play here. One is that um, you there are different tasks, and we're constantly working on um, how we um, display um, the the differences. So you see here in Auckland Central, we have 129 hotels and 53 B&Bs. So people can see that right there. But if um, if somebody just 
automatically clicks hotels. Um, you know, one of the challenges we have is that we are so global, as I said, that B and B's ins might not mean anything to somebody from um, many countries where they have a different word for this type of a thing. Right. Hotel yeah. Hotel seems to be the dominant. But even if I click hotels, you see there's still the tab structure on top of the page. And one thing that we have done is that if we go back to the Auckland Central page. Um, and where you see down here in this section below the photos, top-rated hotels, top-rated B&Bs. You did. We're in a destination that's dominantly B&Bs, so not a city center, but maybe a more rural destination. If that's an area that is predominantly B&Bs, that will be unmuted more prominently above. And if it's a really small area, we will blend them, and the, they will be sorted only by rank. They'll say hotels and B and B's together. Um, ah. So we're constantly working on that. We've actually got some really cool things coming up that I can't disclose um, <laughs> that are going to help people in geographies get found because we have consistently struggled with how somebody who's a little bit out of town gets considered by somebody who doesn't know what the next town over is named. All they know is their destination. Oh, that a sounds perfect for New Zealand. Yeah. Now, look at I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you two quick more questions, um, Brian, because I can see time is running out. Um, now, Petra has somebody um, who stayed with um, with her and posted some old photos of the place, and they've since done um, lots of. Um, New work and all sorts of wonderful things. How? What do? We, what does a person do about photos that are old that were posted by somebody previously? How do you respond, or what do you do about that? Yeah. So if the photo belongs to a review, as long as the review is up there, it's going to stay. Okay. So we would never take someone's photo down. Um, that would amount to editing their review. What I recommend is responding to the um, to the review saying. Thanks so much. Um, I just wanted to update you. We've changed this, this, and this, and I've uploaded the new photos. And those old photos are, are quaint, but they don't reflect the property now. And please take a look at all our great new photos that, of the same location and see how, how improved it is. OK. Now, one more real quick question. Where do all of our wonderful um, customers find out the costs for TripAdvisor? Oh, um, well, everything, um, I shouldn't say everything, all the owner center stuff is free. Um, you know, you don't need to, um, to buy anything to use any of those listings, tools, or anything like that. The only thing I described that um, has costs associated is the business listing, and that's right on your owner's page as well. I think it's probably right at the top of that page. Um, it's... Uh, I think I saw a piece of a question about a very small property with just a few rooms. That's um, right. We're constantly looking at that pricing and trying to determine uh, the right uh, price for that stuff. So send us your feedback. There are um, plenty of opportunities right on that page to either send us an email or I, I believe there's probably an, uh, a toll-free opportunity. I hope there is for you folks. Um, but, you know, Submit it and and stay tuned. Um, you know, I would uh, once you're registered as the owner, you'll be getting emails with latest tips. And um, I put out a, a newsletter every month called Trade Talk that goes out on the last day of the month. And um, if we were ever to have um, a sale or something, I shouldn't be promoting that kind of stuff, but we <laughs> would let you know through those those things. So especially um, if we introduce any new pricing for smaller properties. Um, like if we had a, a new cutoff at five um, at five rooms, that would come up uh, in that kind of a, a venue. Yeah, that's lovely. And and just to let the users know who have um, have um, joined us today at such short notice, um, we are looking. At, we're working with John, by the way, Brian. Um, John's the sa yep. one of the sales managers there at TripAdvisor. We're that's actually great. looking to put together um, a bundling. Um, for um, some advertising for our small users, because we do know that that's um, um, a way that we can help. Um, now, great. look at just really quickly again. 
Um, the reason that we were prompted to do this webinar is because we have changed the ability in ResBook, our system, for our um, users to add that, um, that link in their um, in their emails and welcome home to their um, to their guests. Um, so um, everybody who's listening, start using it. I'm sure it's been amazingly clear from Brian how powerful the feedback is and, and how much we need to use it. Um, can't thank you enough, Brian, for your time and 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 all of the amazing um, things that we've learned today. Um, and so My I pleasure. thank you on regards of all of our people. Um, I know that I'm going to be joining that Facebook where I've been and, and get that going for, for myself. Um, so again, <laughs> Great. yeah, thank you everybody who's listening today. We are recording this so that you can, you can watch it again. So make sure you go to www.resbook.co.nz forward slash training to watch the bits again. And um, happy travels to everyone. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you.